Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Leukemia is the most common childhood cancer. It makes up about one-third of all cancers in the pediatric population. In the United States, about 3,500 children are diagnosed with leukemia each year. Leukemia is a cancer of the blood-forming tissues of the body, including the bone marrow and the lymphatic system. That's correct. And leukemia starts in the soft inner part of the bones called the bone marrow. And any of the cells inside your bone marrow can turn into cancer. And once that happens, the cell reproduces to form lots of new cancer cells. And the bone marrow ultimately gets overwhelmed and the cancer cells can spill out into the bloodstream and spread to other organs, unfortunately. Well, joining us in studio to talk about leukemia in children is Mayo Clinic pediatric oncologist, Dr. Shaquille Khan. Dr. Khan, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. You know, it's uh, a bit upsetting when any child gets cancer, uh, but I think a lot of us didn't realize that leukemia is more common than any other cancer in children. Yes, actually it's the most common, followed by brain tumors. Those are the two most common causes of cancer in children. And of the leukemia, what we call acute lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphocytic leukemia, is more common than the other types of leukemia. Do we have any idea how this starts or why a child gets it? I wish we did. There is a lot of research ongoing about the cause, but basically what happens is, as you pointed out, it starts in the bone marrow. It's a defect in your stem cell, which differentiates into the different you know, blood types. And these cells, when they become abnormal, then they divide, multiply, and cause an abnormal clone or population. So a cell gone bad. Now, stem Mm -hmm. cells uh, produce white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets. Yes. So, And you can get leukemia involving any of those types of stem cells. There are a couple of types of stem cells? There's one type, the basic stem cell, but it differentiates into the different... Uh, types of uh, blood cells. To give you an example, there is something with the red cells called erythroleukemia. And there are some disorders of platelets which are separate. But in the white cells, when they become abnormal, they either are lymphoblastic, which is a type of white cells, or myeloblasts, which are the other types of white cells, and those are the two main types of leukemia. So if it's lymphoblastic, <clears throat> it involves the production of white cells, and if it's myeloblastic, those are the cells that produce the platelets and the red blood cells? No. no? S- another type of white cells. Oh, another type. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's how you classify it, either mm-hmm. lymphoblastic or myeloblastic? Myeloblastic. And then you also class, subclassify it an acute or chronic. What does that mean? So acute leukemia is something which happens very suddenly and very rapidly. And that's the one we see mostly in children. There are chronic types of leukemias. To give you an example, there is a chronic myeloid leukemia and chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL. We never see CLL in children. It's an adult disorder and it goes on for years. So it's really very chronic. CML is a little more um, aggressive than CLL, but now with uh, the advent of, I don't know if you've heard of Gleevec, Imatinib, which are TKI, uh, you know, uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, people can New live- New kinds of chemo. Yep, people can live for years on that. So the most common type to affect children is ALL, acute lymphocytic leukemia? Yes. And then the second most common is AML, another acute form, but this time myeloblastic or myelocytic leukemia. Absolutely. When it comes to leukemia, um, so often you hear people, especially when it comes to leukemia in children, say, well, it's the good kind to have, or and it's the really bad kind to have. As the pediatric oncologist, do you look at any kind of leukemia as the good kind or the bad kind? So that's a very good question because, <clears throat> yes, we go in and tell the parents that we have bad news. Your child has leukemia, but the good news is that it's very curable. I think that's how we do it. And we have come a long way in stratifying the risk factors for our leukemia. 
So we now have low risk, standard risk, high risk, and very high risk leukemia uh, stratification in ALL. And the treatment is tailored accordingly. So yes, there is a, what we can say a good kind of leukemia. And what's the average age of child that you see? So you can see any age from infants mm -hmm. to actually young adults, but the average age is between two and 10 years. And those are the patients which we call standard risk because of their age if they don't have very high white counts. So those are standard risk. And uh, very young infants have a poor, harder and poorer prognosis. And kids older than 10 also are high risk be just because of their age. What are the symptoms of a yeah, majority because, Right, and of because those they're patients. so small, I'm, I, yeah, how do you, why do the parents bring them in? Mostly fevers, sometimes pain in the bones, the kids refuse to walk, um, bleeding or bruising because the platelets are low. So what happens is the leukemia cells, you know, expand into the bone marrow so they got rid, get rid of the normal cells. So that's why you have anemia. You know, your hemoglobin can, can be very low and your platelets can be very low. So all those symptoms come in. And um, sometimes they have liver and kidney issues too because of the high leukemia burden. Because they're kids and they don't know to pay attention how, do you have any idea of how long the child has likely had leukemia before they get sick enough that their parents bring them in? Not very long, because the parents usually are feeling very guilty about it, and we try to tell them that it's not their fault, and it was something which happened, but it is, progresses pretty rapidly. So I wouldn't say six months ago that the child had leukemia. And is that the same in adults, or is that more in children that it progresses that quickly? In, I think in adults also, acute leukemias are the same. Okay. You didn't used to be able to say to the parents, did you, uh, the prognosis is good and this is almost certainly curable? I mean, how long has it been that you've been able to say that to parents? You know, I think about maybe 20 years plus because I had a great nurse practitioner here uh, who actually said that we used to have a diagnosis of leukemia and prepare the kids, uh, parents for the funeral of their child. Yeah, and exactly. we have come a long way. I mean, we, uh, ALL, standard risk, 95%, uh, av low risk, 95% survival. Standard is about 90. High risk is still, we have to work on that. But still, it's about 70. That's I what say. I was going to say. In the 70s and 80s, it was if, if a child had leukemia, that was just the end of it. Right. But that, so what has changed? The, what has changed? The parents who had children with leukemia participated in a lot of clinical trials oh. and helped us get to where we are at. That's amazing. Now you said uh, a little bit earlier that you're learning more about the risk factors for mm -hmm. leukemia. What are those? So what we do now, before, when we gave the treatment, which so treatment is very variable. It's six months of very intense chemotherapy and the first part is called induction, where you try to bring them in remission and we used to do a bone marrow at the end of treatment and look for just the leukemia cells, you know, in the bone marrow. Now we have something called MRD, which is minimum residual disease based on molecular testing. Hmm. So you're, you can, the bone marrow looks normal, but it has leukemia cells. So if you have positive MRD, you become high risk. But if you have negative MRD at the end of induction, that's a very good sign. So I think we have we are making a lot of progress in treating leukemias. Oh yeah, it sounds like it, and it sounds like it's become quite sophisticated too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our guest, an expert on childhood leukemia, Dr. Shaquille Khan. Time for a short break. When we come back, we'll talk more about how they actually make the diagnosis in a child, and more about treatment.
Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McCray. Our guest is an expert on childhood leukemia, Dr. Shaquille Khan. We've learned the fact that there are about 3,500 cases of leukemia in the United States every year. The most common is ALL, or acute lymphocytic leukemia. We've also touched on the fact that the prognosis is so much better than it used to be. So we'll talk a little bit more about treatment, but also... Um, now, tell us how you make the diagnosis. The parents bring the child in. You said the most common symptoms being fever, fever. malaise, pain. Um, when they come to you, um, how do you make the diagnosis? So we actually do some bl blood tests. We do something what we call a complete blood count and a peripheral smear where we look under the microscope to see the cells. And a lot of times that tells us what's going on. So you can actually see the cancer cells? Yes, you can. When if, because if they have blasts in their peripheral blood, that means their bone marrow is packed with leukemia cells. So a lot of times now, if say they come with a very high white counts, we send it for a test called flow cytometry and get the diagnosis done. So why would time. the white count be, be high? I would think it, it, it would be low if your bone marrow isn't producing what it should. So very good question. It can present in both ways. Mm -hmm. You can have very low counts and you can have very high counts because the leukemia burden is so high that you see them in the peripheral blood. And actually that is uh, makes it higher risk. If you have a White count of greater than 50,000, that means that you are very, very high risk. And, and normal would be, what, eight to 10,000? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so so th your really high blood count means you're at higher risk for yes. not being surviving this disease? No. Okay, it's you still, still survive. It's still <laughs> good. So what we do, that actually tells us that when we start the treatment, if you have a very high white count, you can get into trouble with renal failure, things like that. So kidney we have failure. Yep. Kidney failure. So we actually try to f help and do make, uh, you know, give them fluids, give them some medications to try to prevent that. So let's move on to treatment then. Uh, because children are growing, do they tolerate treatment better than adults do or is it tougher on them? Actually, that's why I do pediatric oncology. <laughs> I would never take care of adults. <laughs> Kids are very resilient. They bounce back so fast, it's amazing to see. So well, and kids are very resilient, and they have no other comorbidities. You said, in other words, they don't have heart or lung disease. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's a good thing. Well, so, and they don't know, you know, if, you, if you're an adult, and here's how I've felt for, you know, the last 25 or 30 years, a kid doesn't know. The kid just knows, I want to start playing again. Yes. They don't know how they're feeling or what the difference is. Yeah. And I think the more, um, we see a lot more issues with young adults because they can think mm -hmm. up through these things. So Worry. That, yep, yeah. and worry. A mind <laughs> actually is very important. If you have a positive attitude, it makes a big difference. <laughs> so is chemotherapy uh, still the mainstay <clears throat> of treatment? Yes, it is. And do you have newer, better agents? Is that why the survival is better? Actually, most of the drugs have been around for a long time. The standard treatment for leukemia, we use standard drugs like vincristine, steroids, asparaginase, mm -hmm. doxorubicin. But we do have new drugs for patients who relapse. And we have new modalities for the patients who relapse. Because, you know, even when I say 80% are cured, there's 20% who will relapse so so we are getting better at that too and I do stem cell transplants so that is one option but we don't do upfront transplants for ALL and even for AML now uh, because we have all these uh, good outcomes with the regimens we use. I'm thinking a lot about what you said in the first segment about the parents like it, that the prognosis is so much better and the outcomes are so much better now because of the parents who said yes to some trials uh, that really uh, impresses me can you expand a little bit about that so that people understand what those parents went through and what it meant yes so even now we have ongoing clinical trials to do better and I'm always impressed with our parents because when they come they are overwhelmed 
and then we bring all these information to them about this uh, regimen we are trying to see if we can do better and things like that and go over a 50 page consent form which is required by you know the IRB and FDA and I'm always impressed that they I have never had a parent a couple may have we felt uncomfortable everybody si signs that up you know why because they have realized that there were a lot of kids before them and there'll be a lot of kids after them who will benefit from it so I think our parents are amazing in that way. It's it's selfless. I mean, if your child has been diagnosed, to be able to say, yes, let's give this a try, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Yes, it is. So you said that uh, you start with chemotherapy and all of these children, but sometimes when they relapse, you use other modalities. One was a stem cell transplant. Explain it to us what that is. So what happens is we, the treatment, let's go over the treatment for acute leukemia, ALL. It's actually two years of treatment for girls and three years for boys. We know from all these trials that that's what they need. Six months are very intense, and then we have what we call maintenance chemotherapy, and if you see a child at that time, you won't even know they have leukemia mm -hmm. because they are normal, they are leading normal lives. They come once a month to get some chemotherapy, and every three months we do a spinal tap and for prevention because mm -hmm. spinal fluid, uh, is a sanctuary, you know, nervous system is a sanctuary and testes are a sanctuary for leukemia cells and we know that from experience, so we do preventive things to prevent that. And that's why I think boys need a little longer treatment. Although now, in standard risk, they are trying out that boys and girls would have equal treatment. So we are, it is evolving. But so far, the standard was that two years for girls and three years for boys. All right, Total and then the stem cell transplant, you reserve for <clears throat> recurrence. Stem cell transplant is rec uh, reserved for recurrence. If you are, you fail induction, that you cannot go into remission, you have very high risk features, like for example, Philadelphia positive ALL, which is a type of chromosome abnormality. So the, it is reserved for very high risk patients. And what is a stem cell transplant? So a stem cell transplant, what we do is as I told you before, that this is a defect in the stem cell. So <clears throat> we would um, we basically replace it with a normal stem cell from another donor. So in leukemia, there is no concept of giving your own cells back. You have to have an alternate donor, like a mad sibling okay. or an unrelated donor. And now we are actually looking at haploidentical transplants, means a parent or a sibling who is not a match can be a donor too. So, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to wipe out the recipient's immune system. And you do that with chemo? Chemo and radiation okay. sometimes. And we then give them the new marrow. And that process is the hard process. You can get infections. It's, it is, uh, you know, a lifetime threatening um, <clears throat> procedure so that's why it's not done on everybody and it's only done when it's indicated and then the new stem cell takes up and uh, has new cells and that's when we say that the patient has engrafted when they their bone marrow starts working again and when that stem cell <coughs> transplant is a blood transplant it's a blood transfusion it's, it's like it's a not an injection of cells into their own marrow no it is like it is given like a blood transfusion all right overall survival you said it's really good. What is it now in, let's say, ALL? In ALL, as I said, depending on the risk factor, it's, uh, you know, between, I would say, 70 to 95. Wow. And AML, acute myelocytic leukemia, Myeloid, not quite as good? I think good? it's about 65, 60, 65. All right, leukemia in children, fortunately fairly rare, but still there are 3,500 cases per year in the United States. It's potentially devastating, obviously, for the child and, of course, for their parents, but there are new, lots of new, better ways to treat this, including a stem cell transplant, and fair to say the prognosis better than ever, right, Dr. Khan? Yes, it is. Thanks so much for being with us. You're welcome.